It was a chilly Saturday morning when Aunt Marjorie announced we were going shopping. My stomach turned. Ever since she had taken over our care, things had been different. My brother Tim and I had become her pet projects in a most unusual way. She believed in reversing roles in every sense and that meant dressing us up as girls. It builds character and empathy, she would say with an unwavering smile. Today, Tim and I were dolled up more than usual. I was squeezed into a baby blue suit with a skirt so tight I could barely take full steps, and Tim was in a pink jacket and skirt combo that seemed equally constrictive. Our outfits were completed with matching hats and the dreaded high heels that felt like torture devices. As we stepped out of the car at the mall, Aunt Marjorie guided us with a firm grip on our elbows. Remember, small steps, and no blushing. You are beautiful young ladies, she instructed. The bustling crowd made my cheeks heat up, an automatic response I dreaded under her watchful eye. Inside, the fluorescent lights of the department store seemed to spotlight us. Aunt Marjorie led us to the women's shoe section, her favorite start. Let's find you lovely girls some new heels, she declared, clearly more excited than either of us. Trying on shoes was a balancing act. Each pair was sleeker and taller than the last. Tim nearly toppled over twice, earning stern looks and a whispered admonition from Aunt Marjorie about proper posture and grace. I managed a bit better but felt a pang of embarrassment with each compliment she lavished on us about how, naturally feminine, we looked. Lunchtime offered no respite. We ate at the mall's food court, attracting curious looks from other patrons. Tim and I exchanged pained glances over our salads, our outfits a stark contrast to the jeans and tees around us. After what felt like an eternity, we made our last stop at a boutique that sold formal dresses. One last trial, Aunt Marjorie said, her eyes scanning the racks for something, appropriate, for her sissies. She chose a shimmering gown for each of us. The changing room felt like a theater, each of us reluctantly playing our parts under her direction. As we drove home, our shopping bags filled with clothes we'd probably only wear under her supervision, I caught Tim's eye in the rearview mirror. There was a silent agreement between us, a shared discomfort that didn't need words. Aunt Marjorie chatted away about the next outing she had planned, oblivious to our discomfort. As the months wore on, Tim and I learned to navigate the intricacies of our new wardrobe and lifestyle with a growing sense of resignation and skill. Aunt Marjorie was relentless in her efforts to mold us into her vision of perfect little ladies, and resistance seemed futile. Little by little, the initial discomfort of heels became familiarity, and the swish of skirts turned into a second skin. One Saturday morning, as Aunt Marjorie ushered us into yet another shopping spree, something within me had shifted. Maybe it was the way the soft fabric of my blouse caressed my skin or how the sun caught the delicate features of our makeup, but I felt a surprising twinge of pride. We walked through the mall, our heels clicking rhythmically against the shiny floor, and I caught a reflection of us in a store window, Tim and I, transformed and elegant. Look how lovely you both are. Aunt Marjorie beamed, her enthusiasm infectious. I looked over at Tim, who was adjusting his light pink hat with a tentative smile. It seemed he too was finding a peculiar joy in our situation. As we continued our shopping, trying on various outfits and accessories, I felt a growing acceptance of our new selves. The shop assistants complimented us, and other shoppers often smiled warmly our way, their gestures kind and encouraging. It was as if we were becoming part of a community, embraced and celebrated. At a quaint little cafe where we stopped for lunch, Aunt Marjorie chatted animatedly about plans for the upcoming school dance. I think it's a wonderful opportunity for you girls to shine, she said, sipping her tea. The idea of attending the dance dressed as we were initially sparked a wave of anxiety, but then I thought of the dance floor, the music, and the possibility of just enjoying the night. Maybe it could be fun, I whispered to Tim, who nodded hesitantly, his eyes reflecting a cautious optimism. Over the next few weeks, we prepared for the dance. Shopping for dresses and shoes, selecting accessories, and even practicing dance steps in our living room. The more we prepared, the more the excitement built, replacing the dread. The night of the dance, dressed in flowing gowns and perfectly styled hair, we stepped into the school gym transformed into a ballroom. The evening was a blur of music, laughter, and dancing. Classmates who had known us before our transformation watched in amazement as we moved with confidence and grace. You both look really happy, one friend commented, and I realized it was true. We were enjoying ourselves, 
not just as boys forced into a role but as individuals embracing the moment, no matter the attire. That night, Tim and I discovered a new layer to our identities. We weren't just Aunt Marjorie's projects or reluctant participants in a forced experiment. We were complex beings capable of finding joy in unexpected places and expressing ourselves in ways we never imagined. We returned home, our spirits lifted, not because we had forgotten who we were, but because we had expanded the possibilities of who we could be.